So it's been a confusing few years for OneNote fans. Back in early 2019, we brought you a video saying that OneNote 2016 was being replaced by OneNote for Windows 10. Then in November 2019, we reported that Microsoft had changed their minds and brought back OneNote 2016. So now in 2021, let's talk about what's going on with OneNote. And while we're talking about OneNote on Windows, if you're new to OneNote, we've got some good news. To celebrate the 20th year of OneNote, we're going to post a free OneNote training series for you right here on the channel. Over the last few years, we've created a series of videos to help our training customers to learn how to use both OneNote 2016 and OneNote for Windows 10. And we'll be sharing those videos here on the channel for free. So check the description below for links to the training playlist that will go live on September the 1st. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit that bell notification so that you get those pop-ups to tell you when the new videos are coming out. In the past year and a bit, the OneNote team at Microsoft has been busy at work dusting off the old code of OneNote 2016 and updating it to a modern standard. That's now happened and it's shipped out. And this version of OneNote is now once again included in new Office 365 installations. So if you install Office on a new computer, you'll get OneNote 2016. Well, actually OneNote 2016 is now called OneNote. Sometimes in the documentation, they call it OneNote Desktop, but the icon now just says OneNote. The other version of OneNote on Windows continues to be known as OneNote for Windows 10. And that is still there, and it's continuing to receive updates and new features. In terms of new features, we've recently seen the Notes feed show up in Outlook on the web, in OneNote Online, the OneNote Mac and mobile apps, and both versions of OneNote on Windows. The OneNote Notes feed, it brings together your sticky notes, Samsung notes, and OneNote pages into the one place. So that's just one example of new features showing up in all versions of OneNote. But I guess the question is, how do we find ourselves in this mess of different versions of OneNote? And which one, Note, should you be using? Well, way back around the release of Windows 8, the OneNote team really embraced Microsoft's vision of the future that included apps that could run across any device on Windows, whether it be a Windows-based mobile device, a HoloLens, an ARM-based tablet, or a full-blown Windows desktop PC. And the trick to making this all happen was known as the Universal Windows Platform, or UWP for short. It was a really cool concept, but as history played out, Windows mobile devices failed to win over the market. So over time, the UWP platform was kind of painted into a corner. To be really blunt about it, without mobile devices, it came to represent a compromise framework with no purpose. And over the last few years, the UWP platform features have been made available to all Windows applications, rendering the platform further redundant. There's a lot more to be said about this, but the real point here is that OneNote backed the wrong horse. You can't always pick the winner years in advance, and OneNote did not pick the winner. Ultimately, the desktop version of OneNote is back, and we can expect it to catch up with some of the great features that OneNote for Windows 10 has over the next year. We've already seen dark mode and the OneNote feed added to the product, formerly known as OneNote 2016. Back in late 2019, Ben Hodes, the product manager at OneNote, told The Verge about some upcoming new features for OneNote 2016, like faster sync, Teams at mentions, better search across Microsoft products like Windows and Teams, new meeting notes experiences, integration with to-do, accessibility updates, and a better inking experience. And we'd expect to see some of these features ship into OneNote this year. Other things that have not been announced, but that we'd like to see in the OneNote desktop app include integration with Office Lens. Now Office Lens is Microsoft's fantastic camera implementation for capturing documents. And that's included in OneNote for Windows 10, but not OneNote desktop. It'd be nice if we could even see some of those cool Microsoft whiteboard capture features that allow you to convert a physical whiteboard into a digital one. We'd also like to see a more modern look and feel, perhaps even including the navigation experience of the Windows 10 app. And this navigation layout is more consistent with OneNote on the web, Mac, and mobile. That said, since so many people in the corporate world have worked exclusively with the traditional navigation of OneNote on the desktop, there needs to be a choice. Now, there is a benefit to both navigation styles. For example, in the Windows 10 app, I love being able to turn off the navigation easily and just focus on the page but still having the menus visible. On the other hand, OneNote Desktop has the full page view, which allows me to focus just on the content alone, achieving something similar, but in a slightly different way. But don't worry, if you're like me and you prefer the modern look and feel of OneNote for Windows 10, 
but you can continue to use OneNote for Windows 10. Even though the OneNote desktop app is being updated and it's now the standard app that's delivered with Microsoft Office, there's no urgency to change what you're doing right now. I do 99% of my work in OneNote for Windows 10 and I don't plan to change back over to the desktop version until the promised features like the new inking experience get delivered. And Microsoft have publicly stated that they intend to continue to support both versions of OneNote on Windows. If you use the OneNote desktop app, formerly known as OneNote 2016, continue using that. There's no real reason to change. And there's nothing to stop you from using both if you so choose. I know I do. Importantly though, OneNote is once again a part of the Microsoft Office suite, which is great news. Microsoft have included OneNote as a key part of their Fluid framework, an effort that aims to make data available in its best format regardless of the app that you're using. For example, Fluid would allow you to take a table data and work on it right within Teams as though it were in Excel. It'll make ink from your Microsoft whiteboard available in your OneNote page. And it will power the integration between OneNote and ToDo so that you can generate action items directly from your project plan or from your meeting notes. Microsoft made a big show of Fluid just recently in a video that we'll link to below. It's a really important part of the future of Office 365 and it's great to see OneNote featured prominently there. Over the next year, we expect to see the features of the Fluid framework playing out across Teams, OneNote, Whiteboard and other parts of Office 365. So if you want to hear more about how Fluid will work in OneNote, then hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you're the first to know when we bring you the updates. Now, if you found this video helpful, remember to hit that like button and tell us which version of OneNote you use in the comments below, what you love about it and what you don't. Microsoft has been busy dusting, dusting. They've been busy dusting. Better search across Microsoft product, products.